morning and a very, very warm welcome to St Michael's Church for this service of Brands, Gore, Thorny Hill and Hinton Admiral. Thank you very much for joining us today. Some words from the Bible, Psalm 127 as we begin. Unless the Lord builds the house, their labour is but lost that build it. Unless the Lord keeps the city, the watchman wakes in vain. I don't know about you, but it's rather easy to make uh, plans and have great plans and aspirations for the future. But unless God blesses those, unless God is at work, we're wasting our time. And today, as we gather together to read uh, the Bible and to sing the praises of God, we do say seeking his blessing, seeking his favour, seeking his wisdom and guidance, because that is what we need for success. Here's our strength and refuge. And we sing of that in our first hymn. God is our strength and refuge. The Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. To have a moment of quiet to call to mind the things for which we seek God's healing and forgiveness this morning. Do join with me as we pray these words together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect Prayer for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Grant, O Lord, we beseech thee that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by thy governance that thy church may joyfully serve thee in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Well, in just a moment, Lizzie is going to read to us uh, from the Bible, and after that, there'll be a, a talk and a hymn and then a time of prayer led to us today uh, by, by Dan. But before we get to any of that, we're going to sing again, It's a Light and a Hammer. The epistle is taken from Luke chapter 12, beginning at the 22nd verse. And he said to his disciples, Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy, 
Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So in the early 20th century, there was an art dealer who had a fabulous collection of, of paintings. Uh, he had a son as well who went off to fight in the First World War. And uh, whilst his son was there, stationed on the Western Front amidst the trenches, one of his friends, a budding artist, uh, sketched his portrait. And the portrait, this vague sketch, was sent back uh, to Dad uh, at home. It wasn't the best piece of art ever, uh, but it reminded him of his precious son and it became ever so much more important uh, just a while later when the collector's son was tragically killed in the war. Sometime later the art dealer himself died and there was a long much anticipated auction of all of his paintings, his great collection uh, meant to be worth hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds, a lot of money um, in those days. And of course the great and the good turned up uh, to the auction, eagerly expecting to grab uh, perhaps something really, really significant. And as the auctioneer called uh, order, um, out came not lot number one, and there it was, the sketch of the art collector's son. It wasn't a great piece of work, uh, but there it was, lot number one. Well, this wasn't the reason anyone had come to the auction, and there was an embarrassed silence. Why have we started the auction uh, like this, people thought to themselves, nobody wanted to bid for it uh, at all. And eventually, uh, one, of, one of the art dealer's friends, perhaps feeling embarrassed uh, for his friend, decided to, to place a bid on it. And of course, it sold for not very much money. At that point, the auctioneer banged down uh, the hammer and said, that's it. Uh, the auction is now over. Everyone was very confused at this strange turn of events. And the auctioneer explained, well, it says in the art dealer's uh, will that the person who owns the sketch of his son has everything. That's what the will said. If you own this picture of the, of the art collector's son, then everything else is yours. All those fabulous paintings are all yours. A tremendous offer. A tremendous offer. Well, in our reading from the Bible today, Jesus claims that God the Father has given us everything when we follow Jesus Christ the Son. In other words, the one who has the Son has everything that the Father wants to give them. God has given us uh, everything. That's the first thing we're going to see in the next few moments. And then we're going to see to you that Jesus invites us, having received everything from God, to give everything, to give sacrificially of ourselves. So first then, you have been given everything, says Jesus. Uh, it's a reasonably long reading. We're only going to be focusing on verses 32 to 34 of Luke's, of chapter 12 of Luke's eyewitness account of the life of Jesus. And Jesus says this, do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. According to Jesus Christ, God has given us everything and he is like a father lavishing gifts upon the son whom he loves. He has given us everything. God has given us uh, life itself. Every beat of my heart beats because God says, let it beat, let it beat, let it beat. God has given me life. But even more than that, he's given me life in abundance. He surrounded me, he placed me in a world surrounded by, uh, by beauty, surrounded by relationships that are so uh, fulfilling and wonderful. God has given us uh, so much. And yet he gives us even more than we could ever imagine because he's given us the gift of himself. That God has come into this world in the person of Jesus Christ and stood in my place and your place upon the cross. Because when we turn away from God, when we live in God's world as though we are God and God isn't what the Bible calls sin, we deserve alienation from God. We deserve condemnation from him, from the way we've chosen to live our lives. And yet God doesn't give us that. 
He gives us forgiveness. He gives us mercy. He adopts us as his own children when we place our trust in his son, Jesus Christ, and we follow him as our king and as our captain, God has given you everything. So don't be afraid. The future, however bleak it might seem in the here and now, is yours, says God. He's given you everything. And because God is more generous than we could ever possibly ask or imagine, he's given us, even of his very self, even the life of his only son, because God has given us everything. We should be sacrificial and we should give everything, even of the things that are most precious to us. Jesus says these words uh, next. He says, sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will never fail where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You know, last Sunday we thought about uh, uh, the, the farmer who had so many crops that he decided to build bigger and bigger barns to store up his wealth for himself uh, forever. And Jesus says money is great, wealth is great because you can give it away, you can bless other people. And that rich farmer decided not to do that, to keep it for himself. But of course we don't have ultimate control over our possessions because we don't have ultimate control over our own lives. God alone decides when our lives will come to an end. And when his life came to an end, that man, of course, lost everything. All the wealth he'd struggled so hard to accumulate and keep to himself. There's a better way, says Jesus, to be sacrificial with what God has given you, even of your most precious things. I love that line. I wonder if you've heard this before. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In other words, give up what matters most to you. Now, I wonder if you know what matters most to you. Probably if somebody asked you, what's the most important thing uh, in in your life? Uh, You might say something really worthy sounding. You might say, well, it's family, it's friends, or most, what's the most important thing in the world? You might say, well, it's world peace, or it's, uh, it's the environment, saving, uh, saving the planet. Maybe we'd say, well, it's justice, uh, it's equality for everyone. That's what, I, that's what really gets me uh, excited. We might say things like that. The question is, is that really true? Well, just like when I take my car to the garage and they plug it into that diagnostic machine and it tells you uh, exactly what the situation is with your car. I have a diagnostic tool. I didn't invent it myself, but it is brilliant for working out where your heart really is and what your treasure really is. Do you want to have a go at this? Here it is. Here is the diagnostic tool. You are now about to discover what it is that really makes your heart beat. You have to supply the end to this sentence. I'll be happy when, what would you say? I'll be happy when I get the promotion at work. Well, that suggests that your treasure is your, is your career. I'll be happy when she starts to take notice of me. That person you've been eyeing up over the years. Well, that suggests that your real treasure is the hope of that, that relationship. Nothing wrong uh, with that at all. I'll be happy when I finally get to go uh, on holiday. Maybe that's your treasure. I'll be happy when we get to live in a a bigger house. Well, maybe that's your treasure. I'll be happy when I've got enough money that all my worries will just fade away. Well, clearly money is is your treasure. That's where your heart really is. And of course, no amount of money will make your troubles fade away. There's nothing more reassuring, we said last week, than the unhappy lottery winner, than the unhappy celebrity who we think has got everything but happiness. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so Jesus invites you, having been given everything by God, to give back to God, to even of the things that matter most to you. And that might be your wealth, your riches. It might be to be sacrificial uh, with your money, giving back, making for yourself a a purse that will never perish, spoil, or fade, which thieves won't steal and 
moths won't gobble away at. That's something you could do. Give everything, says Jesus, because you've been given everything. You know, being a Christian is actually really tough. I wonder if you've worked it out for yourself uh, yet. A couple of years ago, we did a a talk series, and one of the talks was, uh, is it really true that Christians are wimps? Because lots of people think that. They think that being a Christian is kind of an intellectually soft option, that you stop thinking when you become a follower of Jesus. It's a morally soft um, option. You just kind of behave in a way that somebody else tells you uh, to behave. They think it's, it's cowardly because you're kind of sacrificing living in the here and now for a, a promise of, of eternity, pie in the sky uh, when you die. Lots of people think that being a Christian is about being uh, a wimp. But let me tell you that true Christians are amongst the toughest people imaginable, people who are willing to sacrifice what's most dear to them. The most persecuted people in the world are followers of Jesus Christ. The first people to roll up their sleeves and help out in a catastrophe are followers of Jesus Christ. And we've certainly seen that in the COVID-19 outbreak as we've rallied round to visit the sick and provide basic banks and so much help uh, for others. That's true heroism. That's true sacrifice. Sacrifice of time and talents and wealth and creativity. And Jesus invites you, haven't been given everything, to give everything. What are you going to give this week, I wonder. Amen. Loving Heavenly Father, we pray for the health and well-being of our nation, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, keep us in the light of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. Lord, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you. Lord, show us how we may share love and faith while remaining at a distance. 
in this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend to the sick, and to assure the isolated of our love and your love. Father, we pray for those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, that they may make wise decisions. Heavenly Father, you want us to be generous people, offering our time, our skills and our abilities and our resources to your service. Guard us, Lord, from holding tight when we should be letting go and honouring you as Lord of all we have. Especially, Father, we pray for the work of our vicar, Ben, and the ministry of this church and benefice in our community. We pray too for the work of the church around the world. We pray that your church would be a shining beacon of your love and compassion throughout every nation. In a moment of quiet, we come before you with the needs on our hearts and pray for hope and healing and a sense of your peace. Generous and giving God, you see us and all who turn to you with compassion. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we come now to a time of uh, church family news, uh, bits of information that hopefully you'll find helpful. Uh, please do come and join us for praying tonight, half past seven, a Zoom prayer meeting, details on the website about how you can be involved in that. And of course, again, uh, this week we'll be having prayers at the Vicarage from Monday to Friday, uh, nine o'clock starts for about 20 minutes as a song, a Bible reading and a time to pray. So please do consider coming along to that. Uh, those who have have found it hugely helpful and, uh, and you could be one of those. Thank you so much to everyone who's generously uh, helped out with the Basics Bank in all sorts of uh, ways, from sorting out provisions to providing them and making donations. Please continue to do that uh, if you're able to do so. Uh, we will be needing tinned things in the weeks going, going forward, particularly uh, things like tinned meat balls, that was very uh, popular, um, tinned uh, curry or chilli or something like that, and uh, packets of rice are good as well. So if you want to provide any of those things, they'll be gratefully received. Breakfast cereal also would be a, a huge help as well. <clears throat> uh, you may know that we had our first uh, in the flesh church service last Sunday, our first church service uh, gathering together in a church building with uh, social distancing and hand gel and all of the sort of uh, things that we need to do to make sure that, uh, that we are safe as we meet together. That was at St Mary's Bransgall and there's another meeting like that today at St Mary's half past 10 in the morning. Very welcome to join us if you feel safe uh, to, to do so. Obviously there's no pressure um, uh, to, to do that and no real expectation uh, that, that you will either, but it'd be wonderful to see you if you think that's okay for you to be a part of. If you're not sure about it, um, please get in touch with us or maybe speak to someone you know who's been already and they can tell you what it was like. And um, yes, I don't want it to cause you any worry or anxiety, but please do consider coming along uh, to our church service. It was quite busy last week, but there's still plenty of space for, for more. So do come along to that. At the moment, we can't celebrate Holy Communion in, in the normal way. Uh, there's lots of restrictions about that. Uh, but I do plan for us to have a communion service at All Saints Church 
in Thorny Hill at four o'clock on the 2nd of August. Uh, it's unclear exactly what that will be like, but it'll be a prayer book service, probably just receiving uh, the bread, and there'll be lots of other restrictions around, uh, around doing that, as you can imagine. Um, but I plan to have a communion service uh, on that day, Sunday the 2nd of August, so please do consider that uh, if it's for you. If you've enjoyed the service, please do uh, like it and subscribe uh, on YouTube. And if you're able to do so, share it on social media so that others can uh, benefit uh, from it. Lockdown has had many uh, curious advantages, as well as it being a very difficult time, one of which has been a greater engagement with church and what church has to offer in providing the good news about Jesus Christ uh, to many more people. So uh, please be a part of that. It's now time for our final hymn, Stand Up. Stand up for Jesus. of God which passeth all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always Amen, Amen.